All right, in this video, I want to talk about the Steenrod squares, and it sounds like this is probably a review for most of you, so feel free to speed through this one if it is. Um, good references, uh, if you haven't seen a lot of this before, if you forgot something, are Hatcher's book on algebraic topology, not the spectral sequences chapter, and Mosher and Tangora is mostly what I'm going to be using. And in fact, these are sort of the main references for the next few lectures will largely be following Mosher and Tangora. So let me remind you uh, that we started this whole story by talking about how the cohomology of some space with coefficients in a ring gave us a graded commutative ring. And what's more is if we take coefficients in the integers mod 2, then we have a graded commutative ring, but we also have a graded module over the Steenrod algebra. And so that's extra structure that we can use, and we'll see some ways to use it later. But ultimately, we're going to want to be using it in some spectral sequence computations, and so that's why we're going to go through this. So if you haven't seen this before, what's the idea? Well, we start with uh, the cohomology of x, and there's an obvious way to get to the same cohomology, but in degree 2n, if we start in degree n, we just take some cohomology class, and we square it, meaning take the cup product with itself. And usually this isn't a group homomorphism, but of course it will be if we're working mod two, um, which is sort of our main case of interest. But what's not so nice about this, besides that, even mod two, is that this isn't stable. So what I mean by that is it doesn't commute with the suspension And that's actually a very easy fact. The reason is because when we look at the suspension and we consider cup products, while well, all the cup products in the cohomology of the suspension of X are always trivial. So we could suspend up and uh, then we've killed this cup product. It's not very interesting. So what we're interested in is something that we can do stably. Ultimately, I'm thinking a little bit about spectra here, um, but the Steenrod algebra is going to sort of take this idea and give us an algebra, really the algebra, as we'll see, of stable cohomology operations. And for now, let's just say on the cohomology of x with mod 2 coefficients. Okay, and this is going to be made of approximations to this cup square, but stably. Okay, so uh, one way to meet this Steenrod algebra is through a bunch of axioms. So let's start there. Okay, so these are going to be cohomology operations in the sense that they're natural in x, and they change the degree of our cohomology. And they're called square i. These are the Steenrod squares. They exist for all i greater than or equal to 0. And these are just going to be natural transformations. I say just like I'm not about to write a lot of things, but I am. So these are natural transformations on cohomology, and they'll raise degree by i. So if I looked at the cohomology of some space in mod 2 coefficients, square i would take me to the m plus ith degree of the cohomology of my space in mod 2 coefficients, and these satisfy a bunch of, a bunch of properties. So satisfying 
I'll call this property zero, that the first thing, or the zero thing, I suppose, is that square i should be a homomorphism. Okay, so we saw that works out mod two if we take our cup square. And that's just saying that this distributes over sums. The cohomology of a space is an abelian group, and I want to respect that structure. Uh, the first property, the next property, is that square zero is the identity. Okay, so this is degree zero, and it makes sense that it could be the identity, and indeed we want it to be. And why is it named square? Well, square i of a should just be a squared. Well, not always, but if that class a lives in degree i. And if we look at higher degrees, square a should just be, square i of a should be zero. So this is when i is greater than the degree of a. And uh, we said that this was a homomorphism in the sense that it distributes over sums. So the Carton formula tells us how to deal with products. And it says that if you want to take square k of a times b, well, you can do that. You just got to split things up. So you'll multiply square i of a times square k minus i of b, and then range over uh, all of those so that basically I'm just splitting these up into uh, sums of degrees that add to k. Okay, and then there are a few more. So number five, let's say that our square i commutes with the connecting homomorphism. in the long exact sequence for a pair. Oops. And with suspension. Oops, that's supposed to be a six. Uh, square one is actually something familiar to us. So this is the Bockstein. And now we've met a few Bocksteins. So it's often called beta but it's the Bockstein associated to the short exact sequence where we include Z mod two into Z mod four and quotient to Z mod two. And so actually in our notation that tells us that square one is not the thing we called beta, but the thing that uh, was that and then composed with quotienting mod two, so that was something we called delta two. And then the final uh, axiom here is a little bit more complicated, so wow, I can, can't even fit these all on the page at once, and I can't write a seven. Whew, okay, there we go. Uh, so the last thing is the ADEM relations. And the ADEM relations tell us how squares commute past each other. So for a less than 2b, if we compose square a after square b, then we can view that composition as a sum of a bunch of other compositions. So it's going to be the sum from c equals 0 to the floor of a divided by 2. Not that you can read that. I don't think it got any better. Okay, uh, it's going to be this sum um, where we take b minus c minus 1, choose a minus 2c, and then we'll change the order of the squares. We'll get square a plus b minus c, square c. Okay, so that's not square b square a, right? That's uh, somehow a more complicated relation. And we're thinking about mod two cohomology, so uh, this is of course reduced mod two. And these are our axioms for the Steenrod algebra, or sorry, for the Steenrod squares, which 
I, I will say soon, uh, form an algebra. But in any case, so this should be natural transformation. It should be a homomorphism. Square zero is really nice. Square one is nicely identified and so on. This extends our cup square. And uh, we have sort of these slightly messy formulas, the Cartan formula and the Adem relations to deal with. And in fact, uh, these first four, so those are maybe uh, some of the nicer ones, though I guess five is, is quite nice too. Uh, what am I trying to say? These first four as in zero through four, let me just write it down. If we look at axiom zero through four, we really can take these as axioms because these uniquely determine the squares. So any other natural uh, transformations satisfying these properties are going to be our, our Steenrod squares. And that means that this implies five through seven, in particular, the Adem relations. Uh, a good source for that, by the way, and a reference I could have mentioned at the beginning, I suppose, is Steenrod Epstein, which is actually, I think, quite nicely written, though it is typeset on the typewriter, so depending how you feel about that. Um, let me just say a couple more things as you're, as you're working with these and starting to play with them. It's a good idea to write out some Cartan formula and some Adem relations. I'm trying to say them both at once. Okay, so um, for the Adem relations, you keep having to take these, uh, you know, something choose something else mod two, and it's helpful here to use uh, the mod two version of Pascal's triangle. So I just start writing down Pascal's triangle where I'm taking the sum of the previous things, only I'm gonna do it mod two, so this row becomes one, zero, one. Uh, then I've got 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. Okay, and you'll see me write this down uh, quite a bit here and there. So, for example, here, this row looks like 3 choose i mod 2, I suppose. So I've got 3 choose 0 on the left, and then all the way up to 3 choose 3. Okay, and those are all odd, so mod 2 that is indeed, uh, I'm always going to get ones there. And then it's a good idea to play with these Adem relations, as I said. Also the Cartan formula, though that one's not as bad, I think. Um, so some, some good examples. You can work out that square one, square one is zero. Um, I should maybe emphasize, going back to this, that this is for A less than 2B. So I, I don't have any relation for um, square, what do I want to say? Uh, square two, square one, but one is less than two times one. So, okay, indeed, there is a relation for square one, square one. And you go ahead and write that out and there's only going to be one term and you see that this uh, binary coefficient ends up being zero. So that one goes away. Unfortunately, I can't write this down and have that pictured on the screen at the same time, but you should check that square one, square two is square three. And as I said, there's no Adem relation for square two, square one. So the squares do not commute. Uh, and in fact, square one, square two is not the same as square two, square one. So that's maybe not immediately obvious. You keep going, and a good one to check is that square 2, square 2 is square 3 after square 1. And we just found out square 3 was square 1, square 2. So that's square 1, square 2, square 1. And you'll often see sort of abbreviated notation because it gets tiresome writing all these squares. So people write things like 1, 2, 1 to sort of remind you that that was square one after square two after square one, but not have to write squa so many times. Uh, so all of these squares together are gonna form our nice algebra, the Steenrod algebra, and I'll talk about that in the next video.